Hey friends, so if you're always on the hunt for that perfect kick drum, I'm telling you, there is a much easier way. Just roll your own kicks. In this video, we're gonna go over a bunch of different strategies using stock Ableton Live devices to get perfect kick drum sounds every single time that sound harmonious with your music. Let's go. All right, so here's what I'm working with. So this idea is ripe for a kick drum, right? <laughs> so let's go ahead and search, uh, I don't know, 808 kick. Let's find a kick. All right, kick 15. So let's say this is the kick drum that we wanna use. So most folks will just take the kick and drag it into the set. There's nothing wrong with doing this, especially if it sounds good, you're good to go. But in this situation, this is definitely not going to sound good. And for the sake of demonstration, I'm actually gonna go in here and grab an Ableton Saturator just to make it so that you can hear the note that this kick drum is making. All right, so I've given it a little bit of drive and so now we can hear Let's say that our riff is just something super basic like this. So go ahead and mute this distracting wavetable sound and let's take a closer listen. All right, so this kick drum sample sounds okay, but it's a little bit too high pitched. It's not necessarily in key with my song. And it's got a little bit of a pitch dive to it, doesn't it? So maybe one thing I could do is I could click on this kick, shift click on this kick, and now I could retune these. So I'll go down a couple semitones. That's too low. Okay, so that sort of works, but it's still not exactly what I want. And in fact, it's kind of changing pitch a little bit too much. The pitch dive is a little bit too much. Let's go ahead and bust out an Ableton tuner. And so this is something that you can do. You can use an Ableton tuner to kind of tune a kick drum. We can see that it's starting sort of on an F-sharp, which is, I think, the root note of this. Yeah, that's an F-sharp there. We can see that it's starting on an F-sharp, but it's kind of diving down below. So where it's finishing is it's finishing on like a flat F-sharp, right? So another thing we could do is we could go in here and we could go to the fine-tune. And we could say, all right, fine-tune transposition, let's go up 30 cents and let's see if that rests on an F-sharp. Now see, that sort of works and we're getting a little bit closer, but no matter what I do with this sample, it's either gonna be sort of out of tune at the beginning of the sample because it's taking such a long time to dive down or it's gonna be out of tune or flat when the sample ends, right? So this is why it's kind of suboptimal to be looking for drum samples or kick drum samples to work with your song as opposed to simply rolling your own or making your own. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this track and let's go ahead and take a listen to this track. Now this track already has kind of a completed first layer of the kick drum that I wanna use. Take a listen to this. And this is just using an Ableton operator. Okay, so let's build this up from scratch. So here's a fresh operator and let's just take a listen to what it's doing. All right, so when I play this note, you probably can't even hear it, right? Unless you have headphones on because that's a pure sine waveform playing very deep. So I'll play it in an octave higher for demonstration purposes. But essentially the first thing you wanna look at when designing a kick drum is you wanna have some kind of pitch drop. So going into this tab right here, we can see that I can click on this little guy and this will activate the pitch envelope. Okay, so if I were to just play it now, we can hear it doo doo. Right, we're beginning to get somewhere. So the first thing to do is to, is to put the peak semitones as high as you can get them. Right, and then you get this big pitch drop sound, right? Now at the moment that sounds pretty dumb, but what I can do is I can drag the decay down a little bit and make this decay happen faster. What does that sound like? Right, sounds like a kick drum. Okay, cool, so we're getting somewhere, right? Now the next thing to do is to think about the punch of this kick drum. Right now, if we look at the first oscillator, we can see that we have a volume envelope here. And right now the sustain is all the way up. So there's no volume changes. This is essentially one flat signal, right? But what we can do is we can turn the sustain down. Let's turn it down, uh, yeah, like 7 dB. And check this out, we'll compensate by turning the volume up. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna give the attack of this kick drum a little more oomph. So now we have Boom. Huge sound right there. Okay, now the next thing is I wanna actually be able to hear the note of this kick drum. Right now, especially if you're watching on like a laptop or your phone, 
probably really hard to hear the note that I'm playing. So the next thing I'll do is I'll go into the filter and the filter has a shaper involved with it. So let's go ahead and choose the soft clipper. Okay, and what we're gonna do is take a listen to this. So already we've got a little bit of saturation, but if I turn up the shaper drive, all of a sudden we can hear that note emerge. Awesome. So let's go ahead and listen to our idea now. That sounds really good, right? So <clears throat> I'll give it just a little bit more volume so we can really make this out in the mix. And real quick, if you've been wondering why I haven't been posting this last month, it's because I'm super busy updating all of my Ableton courses with Live 12 updates. Now, all of my updates are free forever for those who sign up for my Ableton courses because I don't believe in predatory monthly subscriptions. So if you want to be on the cutting edge of music technology with Ableton and join a seriously awesome community of like-minded musicians, definitely check out my courses. You can learn more down in the description. All right, back to it. All right, now this might be a little bit more shape or drive than you would use in a normal mix. I'm just doing this to really, really bring this out for those of you listening on smaller speaker systems. In normal situations, I may have this a little bit lower, something like this. Right, so I'm gonna move this shape or drive up just a little bit more. Now, maybe this kick drum is good enough by itself, but in my opinion, this kick drum could use a little bit more on the front end, a little bit more of a click sound or something that makes it just kind of drive through the mix a little bit more. So I think what folks will normally do is they'll try to stack samples on top of this when you could simply right click and go to group. And what this will do is this will create an instrument rack. And so what I could do is I could actually grab a sample and drag a sample underneath of this operator to make a different chain. So let's go first of all and look for a sample. So maybe I'll do noise. All right, so under noise, I'll go into my samples and let's find just some white noise. There we go. So that white noise is perfect. And so I can use this white noise to my advantage. So here I am looking at a simpler instance and what I could do is I could go into the volume envelope the amplitude envelope and just make it a quick little burst of, of sound so let's go ahead and uh, we'll dial this in we're taking the sustain all the way down and making the decay very short so let's go ahead and take a listen to this layer just by itself right we can hear that right let's turn up the volume a bit okay so now we have a nice spiky sound right there and something else we could do is we could filter it. So what I'll do is I'll turn on a high pass filter and just filter this down. Okay, cool. So now we have this nice little pop sound, right? Let's take a listen to that with a kick. Without it, right? Nothing. With it, bam, right? We've got a lot more uh, attack on that kick drum. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, this kick drum is perfect. It sounds exactly like what I wanted. It's tuned to the song because I played the note, right? This is the note that I wanted in this song. This is an E flat or a D sharp, right? I've got this tuned exactly to my song. Now, I think it's worth pointing one other thing out, and that's that a lot of folks struggle when they have a kick drum and they have a bass line and they're playing at the same time because the bass line and the kick could conflict. They may make a bunch of peak signal. And so a lot of the times folks are using like sidechain compression and that's all fine and good. And that's a pretty common practice. But in this situation, you could actually use this instrument because it's a playable instrument to play your bass line, right? So see, I can play now that this is an instrument, right? I can play my kick drum. I can play it in any note that I want. So what I've done is I've got this clip right here, and this is me actually playing the bass line along with my song. And I'm actually playing the root notes of this chord progression here, where I've got this uh, F sharp, and then an F, and then a G, and then a E flat or a D sharp. So take a listen to this now. So I'm gonna go into the operator and give it a little more shape or drive so you can really hear that note come through. Now this grants me even more opportunities for some creative stuff. Another thing I could do is I could use a second oscillator inside of operator to do some interesting things. So let's take a listen to what happens when I turn up the second oscillator here. Right, we can hear a new note is emerging because we've got now an FM relationship happening right here. But something else we could do is we could do this over time. So because you have a separate envelope for each one of your oscillators, I could just pull this back a bit right? And I'll turn the level up. And so essentially what will happen is each time the kick drum fires, it'll follow this envelope. Let's see what happens when it's like right here. 
Let's make it happen over a longer period. And let's go ahead and turn the, the pitch of this up a bit. And we can emphasize this by turning the level up. And another thing I could do is I could use this filter envelope to kind of open this filter over time. So maybe the first thing I'll do is I'll start with the filter high and then I'll have it close down over time. So tuning the filter low, let's go ahead and apply this envelope to the filter. So. Super cool, right? So there are a lot of creative opportunities when your kick drum is actually a tunable, playable instrument, right? And I think maybe one more thing that's worth pointing out is, let's say we wanted to have some sidechain stuff going on here. I could uh, select the rest of my mix and then group it, right? And I'll just go ahead and put a compressor in there. And one more advantage that's worth pointing out here is that if I open my sidechain options, okay, and I go down to my tuned operator track, okay, what I can do is I can choose, instead of the operator sound, I could choose the noise. Because the noise is a simple burst, right? It's just a quick burst of sound. Once, once again, let's take a listen to it. Right, it's just a burst of sound. So going back to this group up here, I can use that burst of sound to trigger my compressor and have a lot more control over the envelope that's generated when it comes to how my song is gonna duck. So I'll turn my ratio all the way up, attack all the way down, and let's start to dig into this with the uh, threshold. I'll go ahead and gain up the uh, signal a bit. Perfect. So I'll go back to my operator and I will unsolo the noise. And now I have a great control signal here for my sidechain compressor. Let's go ahead and go back to this operator and I'm going to tame this down a little bit, bringing this other oscillator down a little bit. And so now we get. I'll go ahead and dial in this compressor a little bit. Go ahead and unsolo my wavetable, and this is our final completed idea. Cool, so in this video, yeah, I used operator, but you could use any synthesizer to create a kick drum by simply using a pitch envelope and then adding some sort of noise layer for your attack. In my opinion, this is a much more enjoyable way of creating kick drums and honestly, a much more efficient way. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. Much love, everybody. See you next time.